Now we just got to add the IEC socket and drawer goes down. The IEC socket is one of the most dangerous and precarious places because when it's plugged in, this is always live. So if you touch it, if you touch this, even when the front panel is off, you are going to kill yourself or fuck yourself up deeply. So uh, it's best to cover this with something, whether it be capped on tape or uh, it's going to have an entire shield over it so no one can get their little fingers in there. But I, I, I do like to put something over this just to, for, for a client who has never messed with this shit, uh, might not know that, or might just be into the Darwin awards or something. So there is our IEC socket. So now besides the XLRs, which I'll save for last, since they have not arrived yet. Um, we need to get this done by Friday or I'm dead. Let's, we'll get to uh, wiring up all of the, the goodies. Now this wire might be a little bit too big for the IEC socket, AKA the power cord place. You are going to have a ground symbol on top an N for neutral, and hot goes live, hot, active, whatever the hell, goes through the fuse and then to L for live. So that's, uh, that's uh, we'll get to that as we wire it up. But for now, the, the top pin is the ground and that is the safety ground. That will never be removed. It should be a short distance, however, allow enough wire so there is some flexibility where it's not just taut to the ground. You, you leave a little bit of a slack in the wire so it, it can flex a little. Also, there is a code how, how many ohms it should be from ground to case. So. Um, but this is the safety ground. It will never be removed. Uh, it is, it will protect your client. It'll protect you from any shockage. And so we need about that much. Let's clip, the, let's clip it there. Force, force the issue. Oh, hell yes, it will fit in there. So slide a big ass piece of shrink tube, try a, a little piece, we got that, Not, okay that's an L, okay, bend that shit over, by using such ginormous wire it actually makes it a lot harder, however if you are delicate you can make this work, and I do like these grounds, they're made for houses so <laughs> I think they passed the test here. I'm using pretty big soldering tip, a, a nice chisel so this uh, will... When you're soldering these, this is thermoplastic so if you heat the living shit out of this, it's just gonna pull the pin out of it and you basically, you have to go get a new one of these. So heat it quickly, solder it, let it cool. Don't just leave the soldering iron on it for an hour because the pins will just slide out of this thermoplastic or whatever the hell this is. So I'm throwing a fierce solder on this. The big wire is totally excessive. <laughs> so one second, let's let that cool down before we go wiggling it around. That's that. Once you inspect it and you are A-OK -okay with it, the shrink tube over your work, and the little one, and then the big one. And the big one will fully cover it. And normally I use a heat gun, but a lighter will work just great. Let us 
Try not to. Okay, that's good. Nice big ass ground safety ground to the case. That's not going anywhere. That's designed to do that. So, and so that is grounded for the rest of its life. That's what you want to make sure happens. So now live and to the neutral. For the IEC socket, we are going to use two pieces of 18 gauge wire and solder them to the neutral is the top one, live is the bottom one. So two short pieces of 18 gauge solid core. I recommend solid core for all of the power connections and the distribution. The, th the good thing about solid core is that it bends into shape and you can, and it stays in place. So it, it, it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot better than using stranded. Uh, stranded also presents a problem in, if one of the small wires fray from stranded wire, it could cause problems in this area, cause a short, or it's just, it, it's not as recommended as solid core, so. For the power supply AC mains, red should be live, black is always neutral, green is always ground. So get yourself three rolls of 18 gauge solid core insulated in red, black, and green. With this, make sure the wire's straight with no kinks in it. Try to get it as kinkless as possible. So, what you'll do here is make a nice bend. Do not damage the wire by pressing too hard. Use your pliers to press, and then you will solder this into place. Solder it directly vertical, that way a piece of shrink tube falls over the actual connector, and that helps prevent shock, accidental shock. So put that aside. Get your neutral wire, which is your, is your black wire. Get that straight. Strip a bit off of it. Only strip what is needed. Do not strip, do not leave excessive exposed wire, just enough to elegantly solder this. Gently loop the exposed wire without damaging it. So loop this into the neutral, hold it vertical, use your pliers. If, it, if, the expo if this exposed wire goes past the insulation, give it a little trimming just so it nicely, nicely loops onto itself. Okay, now press without damaging the wire. And then that is that. I use a uh, number 44 keister, keister wire. This works okay the most awesome but it works and like I said do not use excessive heat and overdo it where the pin actually falls out of the IEC housing so that's secured let it cool down solder the neutral until it's perfectly covered and secured now what you'll do is you'll inspect your soldering. Make sure it's not cold or bad joints. Make sure that it is shiny. Whip out your shrink tube. Cut off two three quarter inch pieces. The better the connector is covered, the safer it is. Normally I would use the heat air gun, but a lighter Works great. I got these awesome spade connectors from DigiKey and they're on a reel. So it makes 
inserting the wider wire and soldering them a hell of a lot easier. You can just cut a piece, tape it to the table, and insert the wire and solder it. I don't really use a crimper. I find that soldering works just fine on these if it, if it, uh, using 18 gauge solid core. And if you do have a crimper, you can use that. Uh, I, I just like soldering it. It, it, doesn't, it seems to work just fine for me. So you get a little strip of those guys. You can, what I like to do is a 90 degree bend Nice bend, let's say, not 90. So bend those over, finger there, perfectly bend. Same thing with the live. And bend. I'm gonna go like that, that, that. Don't cut too little. And don't use fucking scissors. Um, let's say there. Okay. Strip it. Strip it. So the wire should not extend too much out of the crimp part because it'll in interfere with the barrier block. So just trim to where it right over right where it exits the crimp spot. Okay. Now see how nice that is. How there's really no, it's it's leaving the IEC socket securing to a, ter a barrier strip. There's really no sending this shit off into the yonder. So now with this, put some solder onto the soldering tip so it can transfer the heat to the spade connector, fork, whatever the fuck you want to call it, and fill up that cavity. Apply solder, now it starts flowing. Get that really nice and flowed in there. If it pushes down and exposes more wire, give it a little push back up and make it so it is not so fucked up. Okay. Now before you did this, you would obviously put two pieces of shrink tube so then you could put them over this but I did not do that and we're already behind schedule so let's just move on to the next chingasso can we fit that no normally for the barrier strips you can do loose adjustments with the Phillips head when you're tightening them use a flathead because that will give you a better that'll give you better torque and lock this in the place those are cool i like those they lock into the barrier strip they lock onto the to the bolt that's that's my new favorite brand right there so push them in as far as they go Secure, hold it centered, and then tight, tighten these. And keep push that in, and then slide the heat shrink forward to cover that. So that concludes the IEC socket. Uh, that's this is how it should look. It should look a very, very elegant very secure very insulated and using wire that is capable of putting of passing the correct amount of current you you can go 16 gauge that might be a 
16 might be a little bit better than 18 for this, but for right now, I've always used 18 with no problems. I've never felt the wire heating up or any 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 problems. So, so that's one. You like you don't want to make these too tight. See how there is flex in this that it will actually flex. You can actually move this around, and it's not. It's just not ridiculously tight. The these um that gives a little slack for movement vibration oh come on <laughs>